What's good, YouTube? If you're watching this video, you successfully made it to layer seven of that OSI model where we give you nothing but that application you can apply directly to your life. I'm your host, Dewan. So, today we're going to be talking network engineer pro tips. If you follow me on Twitter, sometimes I like to talk about network engineering skills. Other times I'll talk about network automation. Other times I'm doing some type of motivation or I'm just talking about something that's going to encourage you and help you boss up your skills. Now, in this video, what I want to talk about is network troubleshooting 101 from an entry level network engineer standpoint. Early in your career as a network engineer, you'll find yourself very reactive, making a lot of decisions that you can avoid. And in this video, what I want to do is help you avoid many of the pitfalls that I have faced. With that being said, in a hypothetical position, you as an entry level network engineer, you're supporting WAN connectivity, right? So you have your edge routers, your LAN switches, your firewalls, things of that nature. But typically, in this scenario, we're going to talk about the edge routers. Now, you get an escalation from the help desk contacting you as an entry-level network engineer, and they're saying that a user cannot connect to the Internet. Now, the first thing you may want to do is hop on a router and look at the interfaces, check the routes, check access lists, go to the data center, see if anything's unplugged. But that's really not the right approach as a seasoned network engineer. When someone contacts me and says this, this is what I do. Oh, really? Has this ever worked before? The first question is we ask, has it ever worked? And that's a really good question because if you go checking logs, checking routes, going to the data center to see if a cable's unplugged, asking if the device is powered on, and you do all of these reactive things and the configuration was never set up or the router was never installed or the switch was never configured or the server was never configured, etc., then all of that can be avoided with that first question. The second question, we talked about this, has anything ever changed or has anything changed recently? And so in a good organization, I use the double quotes, there's some type of change law that's supposed to happen. That doesn't always occur. Sometimes Steve will make a change. Everybody knows about it or nobody knows about it. And then all of a sudden you're talking to Steve and Steve was like, oh, yeah, I did change the port on that application, um, but I didn't think that mattered. And then that's the root cause. So you can avoid a lot of time by asking questions one and question two. Now, if no changes happen and it has worked before, the third question we're going to ask is, how long has it been down? This is important. Again, if it's been down for two months, we need to figure out why it's been down so long. Right? If it's been down for this long, we need to figure out. Now, if it just went down, then, okay, let's figure out why it went down. And with this, once you figure out if it just went down, the next question we'll ask, well, what's all affected? Because this outage or this issue could be a larger issue that's not just isolated to that server, to that node that you're troubleshooting. So you want to ask what's all affected before you actually start diving in. Because if a whole lot of devices is affected, this will kind of help you focus to say, OK, is this the edge router that connects us to the Internet or is this one switch that's connected to HR or etc. So this 
All of these thoughts are helping you formulating what's going on. It's helping you draw a picture, helping you save time. And all of this, I'm just sitting at my desk asking questions and I'm checking off my checklist. Right. So number five, what can you access? So if it's just that device that's affected and they say they can't access the Internet, now we need to determine what they mean by that, because they could say, well, I can't access the Internet and is determined that the issue is only related to the WAN and not the land. Or you can determine that this is related to the land or this is related to the WAN and not the land. Meaning that they can get to internal systems, but can't get to external systems and vice versa. So this is what you really want to narrow this question down to help you find that answer. Number six. Now, here's what we're starting to prepare to do some work. We're going to ask, OK, what's the source IP address that you're utilizing? What's the destination IP address that you're utilizing? And what's the destination port? Sometimes you may need a source port, but not often. You need the destination port and IP. And so once you have that, this will give you the ability to, if you decide to do this, hop in an ASA and look at a show con to see if that connection is actually traversing the firewall. Or you can set up some type of capture on whatever type of, um, let's say you got net scouting in your network. Or you want to set up a capture on a firewall or a router or a switch, etc. But normally, this is just information that you're utilizing. You can put it in your solar winds. You can put it in your whatever type of logging system to see if there's anything going on with that. And you can also check your access list at this point if you decide to. Not me. I'm just jotting this information down. I'm putting it on my notebook. And I'm going to ask this question. Can you ping? Meaning... OK, you can't get to this website. So that means that HTTP or HTTPS might be the issue. So let's see if you can ping and what can you ping? So if you can ping the website now, we need to formulate. Hmm. Is this a poor issue? Because if you can ping, but you can't access the application or the website, this could be related to an access list or this could be related to a firewall access list on a router. Uh, firewall access list what may have you this could be in my network this could be in a um, another another network now once you determine if you can ping or not if you can ping now we're going to check the port okay so with this normally you can use telnet so what you would do is telnet the ip address and the port number that you're trying to access if that doesn't work I believe in Windows, you can do test net connection, IP address, hyphen, capital P, then the um, port that you want to test. And what this will do will test the connection to whatever website that you are wanting to access or whatever application you want to access. It will verify if that port is open. That's on a Windows sim system by utilizing PowerShell. And I'll have a picture up here so you can see that now. If they just so happen to be on on Linux, then you can use something like Netcat. And with that, you will open up a terminal, do NC dash. I like to do ZV and then the IP address that you're trying to access and then the port number. And from there, it'll let you know if that port is open or closed. Boom. Right there. Usually you will be able to determine what's going on. Now, if that's the case. What we could do, if that's successful, then we may have some type of other issue that's going on that's on the server side. Now, if it fails, the last thing I'm going to ask for is the trace route. That means ping failed, telnet fails. Now we want a trace route. What this trace route is going to allow me to see is how many hops are being traversed to that destination. Normally, you'll be able to see the end result. Sometimes devices are set up to not reply to ICMP. So what will happen is you will get some bang bangs or some asterisks that makes it look like 
you're not connecting. But ultimately, that's just the router or firewall that's not replying to your trace routes. So don't go off of that. Look at the end results and the end results will tell you if it's successful or not. Now, that's step nine. Now, if all of that leads to them getting to the end node or not getting to the end node, meaning that they can get to the end node, but the port's not open or they can't get to the end node. Now, what you have to do is troubleshoot the network. That's a pretty simple 10 step approach to basically make your job as a network engineer easier. And if you're really sharp, what you would do is put this in some type of written form and you will send this out to customers whenever they have a question about their Internet connection. You can have them go through these steps quick, easy, simple. They reply. And now you don't even have to talk to the customer. You look at this questionnaire. OK, they can access it. Let me take the source. Let me take the destination. Let me do a packet tracer on a firewall. Looks like the ports is blocked. Boom, boom, boom. Let me put in this ACL. Let me test it again. Good to go. Now let me test from the firewall. Good to go. Let me test from the edge router. Good to go. Send it back to the user. Have them test. Connections good. Quick and easy. Network engineer pro tips. I drop them all day. This is troubleshooting. 101, please like, share, subscribe to my channel, and we will catch you on the next one. Peace.